Um, if you're not familiar with Tuesday Talks, it is a weekly, um, basically a weekly chat that we do. We're taking inventory of our current habits and we're developing consistent routines and we're doing all this during our lunch break. But if you're retired, you just log it on, which is cool too. All right, so we're gonna get rolling. into some housekeeping stuff. So I am your host, Tina Cathay. I'm a business owner. I am a certified personal trainer and health coach. I'm currently serving in the Air National Guard, and I'm a huge advocate for women finding balance. All right, a couple of disclaimers. Um, even though I am certified, I do suggest that you um, seek out medical professional, um, seek that out first before you start anything new. So in that way, you're not injuring yourself. You're not going against doctor's orders or things like that. Our funding disclaimer. So funding for this initiative is provided in part by Mission and Ambition LLC and Tina Cathay Lifestyle and Fitness LLC. We have many military women participating in the series thanks to Michigan Department of Health and Human Services through the mental the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan, and they're providing additional funding for this initiative through a federal community mental health block grant and a substance abuse prevention and treatment block grant supporting women veteran strong. We ask that you be respectful of others and yourself, no soliciting, no selling, and then no judging anyone else and yourself is included in that as well. All right, so there is a Q&A in here, also open discussion. So if you have questions, you can hit the little raise your hand button or um, just jump in with your comments and words of wisdom and whatnot. So last week we were assessing our physical strength. Um, a lot of you guys have been doing new routines and adding to your routines and just getting more consistent and whether it's walking, um, going to the gym, and it's warmer now, so we're doing more movement, which is awesome. So we are we assessed how far we've came, we've come throughout this whole process. Again, we're in our sixth month, um, and then talking about celebrating wins, big and small, because those small wins add up to the big ones. So those count too. So do not discount those. And then we also learn self assessments to check fitness improvements and whatnot. So it could be things like how your clothes are fitting, um, the tape measurements, those are good to do with your waist and hips. Um, the scale is always a good one, but not as often, just so you won't try to stay on the scale and worry about that number. Body fat percent is one, um, assessing your stamina and things like that. All right, so let's get into the first part of our lesson, ways to give yourself grace. So you want to focus on your progress. So that doesn't mean focus on what you have not yet accomplished, but focus on what you have accomplished. Again, those big, those small wins add up to the big ones, right? So we want to try not to be perfect at all. It's easier said than done because sometimes we can try to dwell on things like, oh man, I had this goal. I had this date. I didn't accomplish it yet, but it's okay. You want to give yourself grace and allow yourself that room for growth um, because it is an improvement. The fact that you're still being consistent, you should definitely give yourself um, a pat on the back for that. Um, and a quote that I like, and if you want to write this down, improve your yesterday by being 1% better today. Again, that's not 100% improvement every day, just 1%. If you go through 100 days, if you're a numbers person, if you're 1% every day, that adds up to 100%. There you go. So give yourself that room for growth. Let's celebrate non-scale victories. So what kind of victories is that? Again, I mentioned that from the previous what we kind of talked a little bit about last week. Loose clothes, your stamina. If you're able to go up the stairs and you're not huffing and puffing, like ready to pass out, mm -hmm. that is a huge win. You should definitely congratulate congratulate yourself for that. Um, and it's also look at those experiences that you've had. 
I know of people who <laughs> started a new routine and they ended up gaining new friendships out of that, that consistency with their workout. Cause sometimes it's easy to um, look back and that's just part of our human nature. We look back where we always dwell on history because you can learn from history, but you don't want to just be stuck. You look at history and you learn from it. So if you want to look back on what you did yesterday and there's something that you did not accomplish, maybe you ate bigger portions that you wanted to. Um, so then today, maybe focus on that one thing and improve on that. So then there's your 1% better than yesterday. All right, last one for this one, guys, support team. We all know what that is. That's our gym buddies, our friends, new friends that we've acquired along the way throughout this whole journey and whatnot, um, family and friends. The The good thing about this is, is that you're not alone. And then we're all each other's support team too. I feel like like last week when I was not on and we weren't talking, it was, I just feel like something was missing. It was very weird. I was like, I looked at the clock and I was like, oh, I'll be in Tuesday talks right now. <laughs> so you guys definitely were missed. I consider you guys the support team as well. So you guys are definitely appreciated. Has anyone had any changes in their support team since we've started? Like let someone go or added new people in? Yeah, actually, I um, I joined a couple other groups. Um, there was a group, um, Paula Sobe off of Selfridge invited me to a church history class, Church History 101. Nice. As he's a pastor. And I was like, sure, it's a Friday night. It's like a three hour class. And this Friday is our last class. But I just really feel supported by them. And then I um, started a women Bible study on Friday mornings. And so I'm meeting all these new women. And it's, it's amazing, like, when you're, re when you're retired, and you're relaxed, and you don't have all of these pressures of, you know, family and work, and, you know, I can really be present and really appreciate each and every person for who they are, and what they bring to the table. And, but I can also appreciate myself and what I can bring to the table and share with others. And, um, it's, uh, that reciprocality is, um, like unmatched to anything I've experienced. And so I'm really enjoying it. I like that. Thank you so much, Sue. I'm trying to, I'm trying to ensue that now, even though I'm a long ways away from retirement, I wish I could receive <laughs> it. So I'm glad that you have that. Enjoy it continue to protect your peace and advocate for yourself. That's awesome. Laura, I see your beautiful face and I must say you're looking really, really slim. I see it. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's here. It's also, um, yes, at the waist and the hips and the stuff are, well, the waist that you have your pants at, not the other stuff. You still got donuts or whatever they call love handles. That's it. So. Um, I, when I went out to California and looked, looking for pants and stuff to watch what I was wearing, okay, clothing and Ooh. how it, um, just right. things are looser. It's like, oh, I mean, I guess. And so now I'm like, wow, I didn't need to wear this anymore. I got to take this in and this or that and get them fixed and whatever. Cause I'm not going to get rid of them. I like, I've not, I bought things when I had the extra weight. We all have done that. Got to have something right. So now you like these things. You got to just make some, uh, uh modifications and, um, uh, tailoring that's it and uh yeah it's just really 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 pleased and then the scale is showing me something too so that's also and I have had a few things I'm not supposed to have but I'm still within I under uh projected what I wanted for the actual daily weight thing and so now I'm I have days where I have a little bit more and that I'm still under this 2000 cal as it beautiful because i have no idea what i was eating before i wasn't eating a lot but i mean i just i just know that i wasn't changing things on it. Right. so i don't know what i was eating before but the 2000 calorie is not there very often at all it's it's much more at the other end where which is what i've got projected and there are times well you can't go that low this isn't safe on the thing is what they're actually telling me you've got no this is not good so it's another thing about that app 
if anybody didn't know that. So yeah, it's been very, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. I'm getting others so notice, are noticing it too. So it's always nice when you have those uh, positive things coming from the people that you see and they see the changes. I know Sue's mentioned things and and others, my family, I think, if, uh, and, and intermittent friends here you see and it's like, oh, well, yeah, I have. <laughs> so thank Yay. you very much. Here's yep. the celebrate those non-scale victory, focus on your progress, all right there. You got your support team. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. it. Let me try to mute this. Thank you for sharing. We're going to go into our first journal prompt, ladies. Um, when was the last time you had you time? Just carved it out. You sat alone by yourself, read a book, watched your show, did what you wanted to do with not thinking about work, not thinking about any tasks, just did what you felt like you wanted to do in that moment. Jot that down. If you have not, why not? And we'll come back and talk about it. Couple more seconds, we'll come back and share and have this discussion. But when was the last time you had you time? All right, would anyone like to share? Sure. I, I just put late last night, I sat on my porch and played some solitaire on my on my phone. Um, and then I watched some TV and stretched on my ball while my husband snored on the couch in the other part of the room. Um, and that's usually part of my evening routine, so. Um, he goes to bed early. I like to stay up late. He gets up early and I get to sleep in in the morning. So anyways, that's, uh, that's kind of how I like to end my day. Sounds like a good routine to me. So I, um, also was last night, I was doing things for my nursing organization or trying to communicate with people about it. And I just said, and something's going upcoming. So I got back onto Hulu and Disney because I had to reset everything for the um, login stuff. And I found a National Geographic program I loved. I want a National Geographic program I wanted to watch. And I, there's a series of six. There, I watched three of the programs. So it was about an hour and 45 minutes of time doing that. And I just put everything aside, put my feet up and had beverage, only water, but I had a beverage and I just watched it. I go, I need, I want to do this. I just want to take the time and just watch this because I don't watch a lot of things. And this was very interesting and um, knowledgeable perspective, biology, um, biography, history, 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 biography type thing. So it was very, I, I like those type of things and it was very interesting. And I just know I need to um, probably find some more at that time and not feel bad about it because I stayed up too late. But um, <laughs> that's why I'm also not up too late up too long now I got up late so these are things I need uh, that part but I enjoyed watching that movie so I do also watch a game a tv play a tv 
Oh my God, is that talking? I do play a game on my phone, which I didn't do yesterday. Oh no, I, I did all the other stuff. I got to put it away. <laughs> so, but that was my me time. I need to find more bits and pieces of that along the way. So, and not feel bad about it. So that's, that's the important thing. Not regret it. So good. Yes. Especially if it's something that you enjoy doing, you don't get to enjoy it often. Yeah. Carve that time off for yourself. Right. Thanks for sharing. Christina, you had something. Yeah. Uh, my daughter let me see her uh, Showtime app yesterday and I cut up on a show that I've been trying to watch for the past year. So I literally sat there and watched maybe the end of the third season. I'm in the fourth season now. So I really enjoy myself. I took a break from my startup because it's really about to pick up and be hectic. Mm -hmm. So that was my me time. Yay. And what show was it? The Chai. The Chai? Okay. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Yeah. Take that break. But, Once you get into that. To yeah. It. It's going to pick up. <laughs> I would like to know who was the one that plays pickleball? Because ever since I heard that, I've been hearing pickleball explode. <laughs> Laura. <laughs> okay. Laura. I swear, ever since huh. she mentioned pickleball, everybody, everybody in my network is talking about pickleball. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. Um, I need to connect with some of those people that I've been doing it with. In fact, tomorrow was supposed to play, and I just got to make sure it works out for me time wise and them. But yeah, I've enjoyed it. We I really enjoyed it when I was doing the um, head of sessions that were scheduled because now with summertime, you have to kind of pick up and schedule your own type thing. Where this was a session uh -huh. that we went to, but pickleball is like is the is the thing to do these days the up and coming sport for folks yes so very, it very has tough. exploded <laughs> yeah very much so i'll tell you when i was out in california for my uh trip that i had um i didn't find any pickleball out there i was like shocked in the part that i was at i said you're really? kidding me wow. i'm just, like, so shocked but it was not there that i could see or maybe well hidden but I didn't take my pickleball battle with me anyway. So, have you ever heard of <laughs> an aluminum? Have you ever heard of a aluminum paddle? Not for that, no. no. All right, because I I saw them at Ollie's and they were really cheap, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna get this till I talk to Laura. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're the consultant now. I don't know how well the aluminum would be because aluminum can bend easily. So I don't know, and they have other things that they're making them with that are um, also as lightweight but i would think that number one they're stronger for starters and um i don't know about aluminum yeah um so all but, right we'll talk uh, later yeah. about yeah. it thank all you right. mm -hmm. <laughs> laura's got everyone into pickleball <laughs> not a bad thing all right let's get into our second lesson for today why you shouldn't feel selfish for taking time for yourself laura just mentioned that Yep. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty. No selfish. Um, and because it isn't selfish, you're taking time for yourself, right? It actually helps boost your mental health. So if you're taking time for yourself, you can help de-stress, lower your anxiety, lessens your chance of being physically and mentally, um, not impaired, but challenged during those situations. So if you are taking time for yourself, you're lowering your stress levels. So if something happens to where you get into a challenging, challenging situation to where, whether it's at home with a spouse or you're at work with a coworker, or you're just driving down the street and someone cuts you off, you have more patience to, to be able to deal with that kind of stuff. So whether if you're not taking that time for yourself, you're always, you're not lowering that stress level. You're kind of keeping everything at bay, trying to hold on, making sure you don't let your lid explode on anyone else. Um, so taking that time actually allows you to de-stress, take that breath. So you have more patience to where you're dealing with other people and other challenging situations. Um, so you have to work on filling your, your cup up first. I say this all the time to people, when you get on the plane, if emergency happens, they tell you to put your mask on first before you try to go help someone else put their mask on. Because if you are not doing that, if you're not serving yourself first, you're not going to be as effective at serving and helping anyone else. You'll be running on fumes, running on ease, short-tempered, um, thinking, 
can be altered as well if you allow that stress to just sit at bay. Um, again, we're going to deal with stress. That's just our nature. But um, having that self that self reflection time, that you time, allows you to help combat that and lower those stress levels. And they can also help motivate other people too. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I know we've all talked about how we want other, you know, the close people around us to kind of emulate what we're doing and kind of hop, hop on that bandwagon of being more health conscious and whatnot. Um, but people are still watching you, whether you know, realize it or not, they might start picking up on the little things that you're doing or ask you questions about, oh, hey, I saw you were eating this or, oh, you're going to the gym again. Maybe I can come with you. So they're in that pre-contemplation stage, which means they're thinking about doing something um, based off of what they see you do. So it just takes people a little bit longer time, but you are inspiring someone else just doing what you do consistently on a daily basis. Um, and that's that helps to improve your relationships too as well by doing that. Um, you're able to communicate better with your partner or communicate better with a coworker if something challenging comes up, um, you're less short-tempered with your kids. At least I know I, I've noticed that a lot. Like if I'm taking that time out for myself, I'm getting my workouts in, um, I have way more patience with this five-year-old, which she is giving me the run for my money lately. So, um, so it helps. Ed, have you realized or noticed that you are more patient with your bubble, everyone inside of your circle? from you taking that time to yourself? Yeah, I I just turned 60 in November. And, you know, I've heard this before, fill your cup first, you know, and then there's others over self. And, you know, I was raised to always take care of other people first. And so I think this year, it's really like, I'm actually talking to myself and saying, what what do you need to do for you today? And before I say yes to anything, I need to look at my schedule, not only on that day, but the day or two before and the day or two after, because I don't have the stamina that I used to as much as I'd like to. Um, and admitting that to myself was huge. But I also like, like you said, um, it's hard to have and be patient with people when you're annoyed or you're resentful because you didn't do something to take care of yourself first. And so I'm really like more aware and more present with my thoughts and my feelings and getting the enough sleep and like saying no to stuff. I said no to a meeting tomorrow because I just found out about it today. And I'm like, no, I get up at no eight o'clock in the morning and going and passing out food boxes. I don't have to. And it's too early for me. I'll do it at one in the afternoon. Yeah, no problem. The day, you know, but if I, you know, so it's, it's been a challenge, but it also, it's like, you keep repeating the same mistakes until you finally learn the lesson. And so I'm, I'm finally learning that lesson. Good. <laughs> yeah. Laura thumbs up too. Good. Sometimes it takes us making the same mistake over and over again to learn that lesson. So I've, I've done that before too. It's like, why do I keep having the same outcome? Cause you keep doing the same thing. But um, that kind of brings us into our next question. And, and Sue, you've kind of already answered it. What is hindering you from having you time? So why are you not able to take that time for yourself? Or why don't you feel empowered to take that time for yourself? Let's take about a minute to jot that down. We can come back and talk about it.
All right, what is hindering your time of reflection and being alone? Who would like to share? All right, well, ladies, you know, I'll always talk. I always got something to say. <laughs> I said I can easily be persuaded to help and serve others because that's what I saw my mother do. But practicing these lessons about, you know, taking you time is helping me see my part in all of my relationships um, and, and not blaming other people when I resent saying yes to something or after I've done it, then resent, you know, all that resentment builds up and it's not a, a happy place to be. So um, it, it is it's a happy place to be when you can say no with confidence and be okay with it. That's absolutely true. I like how you said you're basically, you can't get upset at other people when you said yes. <laughs> you didn't have to say yes. <laughs> Laura? Yeah, that's very good, So You can't, and that's true. Um, I think it's, it's a, a, the overcommitment that you do in life and that you need to learn not to do. There's um, the subconsciousness that you've had ingrained into you since childhood that you do for others first and don't be selfish. And why don't you think of that other person and not just yourself? It's ingrained into you um, that is so ingrained. <laughs> so, um, and then um, as a parent, you have this part of your child, your responsibility as a parent is to care for others care for that child, make sure that child is safe and fed and loved and all these things. And you want to be the good parent, the better parent. And in there initially, when you're young, you have to do everything for them because they can't do squat and you can't wait for them to get to do their own thing. And then when they do, it's like, oh, don't you need me anymore? And it's like, wait a minute. So you got this in this circle thing that you want to maintain perhaps, but you don't, you're not supposed to, they need to grow and so forth. And you're supposed to grow with it and let them do and then slowly find things for yourself. Not You get too much involved in that world of the childhood and their parents and friends that you meet there, which is good um, that you have them. So, um, but yeah, I need to, I like what Sue said. You need to take time to be your own partner in a relationship um, is essentially what you said. I, it, and I reworded it this way. And myself is a relationship too. And I need to... Um, Keep that in mind and I, I sometimes I take offense well not offense I, I take um what is the word I want to I take I get a little upset when people say well you gotta take me time I say well who's me <laughs> but I need to um do for me first also and I'm important for myself you love yourself before you love others you have to do that you have to love yourself and like yourself to have the self-confidence and such and that so you can love others and be good for others. So that's something that we don't always remember offhand. So that's my take on that. No, yeah, I agree. You definitely do have to love yourself and it, it will help you love others. Let's hit the nail right on the head. Right on the head. Have you ever heard of if you're not in charge of your schedule, someone else is. Yes. That kind of really made me take a look like, oh, yeah, that's right, man. I'm doing all that stuff for that person. And that, <laughs> what? what? Right. <laughs> and I'm the one that, I, you know, I'm, all, I'm the only one that can say, uh, don't do it, you know? Yep, exactly. Exactly. So. With that being said, we're, we're going to talk about making yourself proud every day, giving yourself permission to make those mistakes um, with, because we're not going to be forgiving of ourselves every day. We're not going to give ourselves grace every single day, every moment. Um, that's perfection. And we're not that. And we're not aiming to be that, right? We're working on being more consistent. Um, 
to do all this th- these things by just taking the pressure off yourself, like both Laura and Sue stated. Um, and it's not lowering your expectations of your outcomes. If you don't go work out or if you don't give yourself grace, or if you don't do something that you set out to do for that day, if you didn't check that box on your to-do list, um, you're actually moving in the opposite direction of perfection. You're just trying, again, to be consistent. And you're creating those goals that are in line with your values. So if you're not doing that, if your goals, if your aspirations, if what you're saying yes to is not in line with your values, and you are a value, right? Like you value yourself, like Laura was saying, you have to love and respect yourself basically. So if you keep saying yes to everything and, and trying to always serve others, but what about yourself? You know, you have to put yourself in that in that category too of serving. So you are worthy of that. Um, work on your own relationship with yourself. So then that way, you can have that time and have that energy to give to anyone else and pour into them. Um, it's going to take a lot of stepping outside of our comfort zone. We're used to doing things the way we want to do them, how we want to do them. Um, it can be uncomfortable for some of us to do for ourselves first. I know, Laura, you you said it. Um, that's how we're raised, especially as women. We're raised to do for everyone else, do for our spouse, be submissive. Um, but then at the end of the day, it's like, we're constantly running on E and that does not feel good. We can operate in it. We can function. We'll get the job done, whatever it is we need to do, but at what expense, right? At the expense of burning ourselves out and everyone else over here doing well, but we're just like, I'm so done. I'm tired. I don't want to do anything for myself. I don't want to cook my favorite meal. Don't have enough energy to watch my show and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's something that we can do is step outside that comfort zone of what was ingrained in us and give ourselves that permission to make those mistakes. Keep a journal, like jotting down how you feel. If it's something that you're not confident enough to tell someone um, and you have it harboring inside of you, write that down. Like I feel blah, I feel, or I think whatever that is for you, document that in your journal and kind of go back to it if it's a day to where you're I don't feel like I deserve I'm deserving of self-care write down why and why are you feeling that way and then go back and reflect later on because it could have been just that kind of day or um see if it's a constant thing that you're you're going through and why you're feeling that way take that self-inventory and then that way you can make those necessary improvements of giving yourself more grace and that permission to um, move forward and have that self-care. Again, it's all about improving 1% every day, not doing everything correctly, perfectly every single day. That is not realistic at all. And that is a whole nother mental thing that you're going to place on yourself that's going to bog you down. We do not, that's the opposite of what we want, right? So this one, this last journal prompt, you can write that down. It kind of makes you go deeper into the last question of why is it challenging? You know how you have the kid that always asks you why and you give an answer and then it's another why and then you got to give another answer. So just kind of pulling more out of you. Why is it challenging? Just be 100% completely honest with yourself is something you don't even have to share with us. Just dig deep into yourself and say, why is it challenging to give yourself grace? I'm going to take a minute, write that down. And then um, if you want to share, you can. If not, just leave it in your journal for yourself. Thank you.
Alrighty. Does anyone want to share? Why is it challenging sometimes to give yourself grace? I just, I, I was looking for this quote and it was so good because it, it was like when it said something along the lines, um, like when, when, like something like, when do you feel out of control or something? And it, and it had to do with when you don't feel like you have the power to change a situation that you're in, or when you just don't feel like you have the power. And I wish I, I was looking for it because I took a picture of it. It was at my counseling office. Um, back in April and I can't find it. And I'm like, oh, oh, I just pulled up a picture of you doing your thing. <laughs> Ways to habits. <laughs> but anyways. Perfect. Thank you for that, Sue. Um, we're going to start wrapping it up, ladies. Um, great job today. I always like love talking to you all and um, sharing and whatnot. Um, the word of the day today for this week is beauty. So it's a combination of different qualities like shape, color, form um, that pleases the aesthetic senses, especially sight. So I want you guys to go through the week and know that you guys are beautiful inside and out. And I want you to exude that to the world and just continue to be your awesome, beautiful selves this week. Um, also uplift another woman too, and let her know that she's beautiful as well. Um, the challenge for this week, I want you to look in the mirror and tell yourself, good job. Like you can say it sitting down, but I want you to just look yourself in the eye in the mirror. It's going to be very uncomfortable. There's that comfort zone. Get outside that comfort zone and do that. Um, tell yourself, good job. And then next week, we're talking about embracing your unique character. So I want you guys to come with some adjectives um that would describe yourself and maybe someone has described you uh, i think that'd be fun to share those words and then we'll come back next week for our last and final week which is bittersweet i know we all have a lot going on this summer but we've been with each other for six months and i greatly appreciate you all um but yeah See you guys next week, same time, 1115 for our last and final Tuesday talk, gone six months strong. Um, if you guys need anything this week, don't hesitate to reach out. And I will see you all next week. Have a great one. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.